So some of you are wondering, or maybe have noticed, I don't have a mylar in place when I'm placing my composite, that there is no wedge, there's no mylar strip for recreating the proximal surface. The key with that is that I'm using this IPC, this super thin instrument that's going to allow me to move the composite and blend it interproximally without having to have that mylar strip or a wedge in place. And I'll show you as we do that as we continue on. So before I cure this layer, there are several things that I want to evaluate. I'd like the length to be about the same length as the adjacent tooth. It is fine if it's a little bit longer because I can adjust that down. I prefer not to be short because I need this, uh, this nano to protect the inside of the ledge because my microfill is going to be filling in that area. And as we talked about during the lecture, the microfill doesn't have the same strength as the nanofill of the hybrids. So I need to make sure that there isn't any excess composite over the facial wall because I need as much space as I can to continue to block out that darkness. And if I have this translucent material coming over this facial wall, I'm going to allow that darkness to shine through. So I have to make sure that I'm just going up to the incisal ledge and not taking up any space at all where I need to go in and opaque in that area. All right, so I wanna take a look from the incisal before I do my curing to make sure that my incisal edge is not too facial. So this is where I'm looking to make sure that I'm supporting the incisal edge with the nano composite because I don't wanna rely on the microfill to support that edge because the microfill just doesn't have the same flexural strength. Now that I have the WTI Nano in place, I'm going to light cure that for 10 seconds. All right, as we look through the scope, you can see the translucency with this WTI. So that's going to help really allow us to create the same translucent effect that we're seeing in that neighboring tooth. 